Imagine waking up in 2026 and discovering that Tesla has not only started production of the highly anticipated Pi phone, but is already delivering the first units at an accelerated pace. It sounds like fiction, but that's exactly what's happening. Tesla's factory in Fremont has started its engines, or rather, its robotic arms, and officially begun large-scale assembly of its foldable smartphone, and most impressively, with an ambitious goal of 120,000 units per month right off the bat. For those who think Tesla only understands cars, this game-changer in the world of mobile devices shows that Elon Musk wants more, much more. He wants to challenge not only Apple and Samsung, but also the entire logic of how a smartphone is produced and delivered to the consumer. This speed is even more impressive when compared to the iPhone 17 launch last year, which barely surpassed 90,000 units in its first month. Tesla isn't just trying to enter the market, it's trying to crush it. And to do so, it's not relying on tired workers or slow production lines. The heart of this revolution is an almost entirely robotized factory, with artificial intelligence systems that coordinate each stage of assembly with near-surgical precision. Less human error, more speed, more quality. And this means that, unlike other launches, consumers may not have to wait months to get their hands on the device. With the help of these intelligent robots, Tesla has managed to increase production line efficiency by 25% compared to traditional smartphone factories. This isn't just a nice number for market analysts. In practice, it means shorter lines, fewer factory defect complaints, and a tempting promise, pre-orders with delivery in just a few weeks. A real gift for fans of the brand who are used to waiting months for their Teslas and can now get a taste of the future much faster. And the most curious thing is that all this haste doesn't seem to be just about breaking records. It's a clear market strategy. By delivering quickly and with fewer errors, Tesla creates a sense of instant confidence. After all, who's going to want to wait three months for a Galaxy Fold if you can have a Pi phone in three weeks? That is, of course, if the quality tests are up to the level you expect from a company that's used to building rockets and self-driving cars. And from what we've seen so far, they are. Another detail that stands out is how this accelerated production is directly linked to Tesla's philosophy of integrating hardware, software, and vehicle into a single ecosystem. The Pi phone isn't just another foldable phone on the market. It's a piece that fits into Tesla's puzzle, a mobile part of your car, your smart home, your digital life. And if it arrives quickly, the integration also begins sooner. Tesla knows that each additional day of delay can cost thousands of users who choose another brand. Therefore, the haste is strategic, not desperate. Moreover, there's a detail that few people are noticing. This accelerated production line also functions as a laboratory. Each assembled phone is an opportunity to test improvements in robots, parts, and sensors. It's as if each device that comes off the line helps the next one to be even better. A circular logic that is only possible because Tesla controls every layer of the process. This goes far beyond what Apple or Samsung achieve today and could become the definitive differentiator for those seeking true innovation. Now, the burning question is, will this speed be maintained as demand grows? Tesla promises to scale promises to maintain quality, promises to deliver like never before. But the smartphone world has taken down giants before. The difference is that Elon Musk doesn't like to lose. And when he enters a race, it's not to come in second, but to achieve that goal, something more than robots and efficiency is needed. With production running at full speed, the inevitable question arose, where do so many components come from? And how does Tesla ensure that everything arrives on time, with quality, and without halting the line? That's where one of the company's most strategic moves comes in, the adoption of a hybrid supply model. No relying exclusively on external suppliers 
or trying to do everything internally. Tesla found a balance. While AI chips and high-density batteries are produced in-house, foldable OLED displays are imported from South Korea and Taiwan, where this type of technology is already mature. This hybrid model is like a well-thought-out chess game. Tesla maintains control over the components that truly define the performance and integration of the Pi phone with its vehicles, while outsourcing what already exists on a global scale and with high quality. This not only reduces the risk of bottlenecks in the supply chain, but also allows the company to adapt quickly to changes in demand or even geopolitical crises as we have seen in recent years. It's a type of flexibility that neither Apple nor Samsung can apply with the same freedom. The interesting thing is that this choice reveals an absurd level of confidence in its own internal processes. By manufacturing the chips and batteries in-house, Tesla ensures that the heart of the Pi phone, what connects it to the car's ecosystem, is under direct supervision. This eliminates dangerous dependencies and opens up space for faster innovations, such as monthly and personalized updates, without having to wait for third parties. And let's face it, in a world where everything is connected and needs quick responses, that makes all the difference. At the same time, outsourcing components less sensitive to Tesla's identity, such as screens, frees the company to focus on what really matters, integration. And we're not just talking about putting parts together, it's about creating a cohesive experience where the cell phone is not just an accessory, but a personal control panel for your electric car. In this approach, each supplier choice is strategic, meticulously calculated to avoid compromising the fluidity of production or the vision for the future. The result? A bold forecast of 350,000 units delivered in the first quarter alone. A number that, if realized, surpasses any expectation for foldable device launches in 2026, including the highly anticipated iPhone Fold. This is only possible because the hybrid model allows for modular growth. If demand increases, it's easier to negotiate with screen suppliers than to expand a semiconductor factory from scratch. And if there's a global shortage, Tesla still holds the heart of the device in its hands, literally. But the most curious aspect of this strategy is how it can inspire other companies in the sector. Until now, the standard was either to rely too heavily on third parties, as most Android brands do, or to try to control everything like Apple, which limits agility. Tesla proposes a third way, selective control, logistical intelligence, and a total focus on the user experience. It seems simple, but it requires an absurd level of synchronization between engineering, supply chain, and production. And this is something that Elon Musk seems to be mastering more and more. This approach also allows for regional customizations, which can be vital for global scaling. For example, connectivity components can vary depending on local networks, and adapting this without compromising the entire process is a brutal competitive advantage. Tesla isn't just manufacturing fast, it's manufacturing with room for maneuver, something traditional rivals rarely achieve. This makes the Pi phone not only a viable product, but a strategically lethal one. It sounds like a joke, but in 2026, while Apple and Samsung are still selling their foldable phones for over $1,700, Tesla launched the Pi phone for a mere 219 dollars. Yes. 219. You might even wonder if they forgot a zero there. But no, this price isn't just real, it's intentional. Elon Musk isn't trying to create a luxury product. He's creating an extension of the Tesla car, a functional accessible device that integrates seamlessly into the driver's routine without breaking the bank. And what's more, without requiring subscriptions to third-party apps, adapters, or workarounds to access the car's basic functions. This price is a bombshell in the mobile technology market. While competitors are betting on sky-high margins and exclusivity, Tesla is aiming for volume, mass adoption, and customer loyalty. And, man, it's a brilliant move.
The Pi phone ceases to be just a cell phone and becomes a kind of master key for the Tesla ecosystem. And that changes everything, because by charging less for the hardware, the company opens up space to profit from what really matters, the services. And let's be honest, there are already many drivers out there spending more on music subscriptions and premium GPS than on the cell phone itself. But the real trick lies in the perceived value. When someone sees a foldable phone for $219 with integrated AI, ultra-fast charging battery, and real-time synchronization with the car, the reaction is automatic. Something's wrong here, or it's too good to be true. And it's precisely this subversion of expectations that makes the product go viral. Because the price is low enough to seem impulsive, but the utility is high enough to seem smart. It's one of those purchases that the consumer makes smiling. Furthermore, there's a domino effect built into this strategy. For every Pi phone sold, more people enter the Tesla ecosystem. And each person within the ecosystem is a potential subscriber to autonomous driving updates, AI packages, cloud analytics, smart home integration, and so on. An iPhone or Galaxy user needs to download several apps, buy accessories, and still deal with compatibility limitations. Those who have a Pi phone, however, receive all of this on a silver platter. And when the user realizes they've saved $300 a year with this choice, they rarely go back. This cheap hardware, valuable software model is reminiscent of what Amazon did with Kindles, or even what Google itself tried with Android but with a striking difference. Tesla has control of the car, the system, and the phone. It's a closed ecosystem where everything communicates perfectly, without noise. And this generates such a fluid experience that any alternative seems outdated. Consumers start to think twice before spending almost $2,000 on a Galaxy Fold that doesn't even turn on the car's air conditioning. Another thing that stands out is the timing. At a time when the whole world is talking about the sharing economy, cost reduction, and useful technology, Tesla hits the mark. The Pi phone arrives as an answer to excess, less ostentation, more functionality. And this has appeal not only in the United States, but also in markets like Brazil, India, and parts of Europe, where cost effectiveness outweighs the logo on the back of the device. It's as if Tesla is saying, you don't need to be rich to own a piece of the future. This price also creates a sense of urgency. The idea that for so little you can have a device with embedded intelligence, full integration with your car, and support for monthly updates creates psychological pressure. Either you buy now or you're left behind. And then, even those who don't own a Tesla start to wonder if it's worth entering the ecosystem just through their phone. This side effect could end up boosting car sales as well. It's a movement that nobody expected, but it makes perfect sense. And that's the magic. The Pi phone isn't just cheap, it's strategically cheap. It doesn't represent the end of Tesla's revenue stream, but the beginning. Because what comes built into it, or rather, what it unlocks, will still generate a lot of discussion especially when you look at the level of integration it offers with the brand's cars. What truly makes the Pi phone a key piece in Tesla's puzzle is how it connects to the car, literally. We're not talking about pairing via Bluetooth or opening an app and waiting for it to sync. We're talking about real-time, constant integration, almost as if the phone were an extension of the vehicle's central system, only in the driver's pocket. From the moment the person gets in the car until the moment they park, everything is there, visible and accessible in the palm of their hand. Cabin temperature, battery status, maintenance forecast, real-time energy consumption, all of this appears directly on the Pi phone with the fluidity of someone using a personal Tesla remote control. What's most impressive is how Tesla managed to reduce the response time for this information to less than a second. While on the iPhone, even with third-party apps, the car's data can take up to five seconds to update, the Pi phone delivers everything almost instantly. This completely changes the experience. It's like going from AM radio 
to high-definition streaming. The driver feels in control at all times. And honestly, this is something most automakers are still trying to achieve. And Tesla is already putting it in the pockets of its customers. This integration isn't limited to passive data. The phone can trigger commands in the car, such as unlocking the doors, starting the heating, or even alerting about unusual battery or tire pressure behavior before the vehicle's main system displays a warning on the dashboard. It's as if the Pi phone were the driver's invisible co-pilot, always one step ahead. And because it's completely aligned with Tesla's software language, it doesn't need forced adaptations or updates to function smoothly. Some people even thought it was an exaggeration. But the idea that the cell phone will be Tesla's new secondary brain makes sense. When the driver isn't in the car, the phone takes on the role of a watchdog. It alerts drivers if there's been an attempted break-in, shows images from external cameras, tracks the car's exact location, all with an encrypted system that works even without a cell phone signal, thanks to the internal mesh network between Tesla devices. This is a huge relief for those who live in more remote areas or suffer from signal drops. And as if that weren't enough, the AI chip embedded in the Pi phone learns from the driver's behavior. It starts suggesting routes based on history, warns when the car has different energy usage patterns, and even anticipates maintenance based on small deviations that would go unnoticed by a conventional system. This isn't just about convenience. It's about safety, savings, and longevity for the vehicle, a type of embedded intelligence that makes the phone almost indispensable for anyone who drives a Tesla daily. Another interesting point is how the Pi phone is creating a new type of Tesla user. Previously, the person who bought the car was the central point of the experience. Now, with the phone, any family member can interact with the vehicle, receive alerts, program functions, as long as they have a Pi phone linked to it. This creates a network of users around a single car, expanding Tesla's presence beyond the driver, a strategy that increases the perceived value of the product and, at the same time, further disseminates the brand culture. It's almost impossible to look at this and not see a paradigm shift. The car ceases to be just a means of transportation and becomes part of a smart, living ecosystem. And the Pi phone is the gateway to that. It's not just a gadget with AI. It's a strategic piece that brings the user even closer to the Tesla experience. And when that connection becomes part of everyday life, there's no going back. But there's still one piece of the puzzle that completes the whole story. The Pi phone's internal technology. Because behind all this integration, there's an arsenal of hardware and features that make this foldable phone not only keep up with the big players, but threaten to surpass them. Behind the futuristic foldable design of the Pi Phone 2026 lies otherworldly engineering, literally inspired by Tesla and SpaceX's own space advancements. The device isn't just entering the fray with Apple and Samsung, it's attempting to redesign what it means to own a smartphone today, starting with the battery.